Hi, man of family. How do you feel when someone interrupts you? Especially when you're deeply involved in an important activity. You know, Jesus found himself in that situation regularly. People in crisis never asked Jesus if it was a convenient time for him to help them. They routinely interrupted him with their emergencies. This coronavirus pandemic has exposed us to nonstop emergencies when we watch the news. There's many, many people in crisis mode, emergency mode, that need help. Just like in Jesus' era, they need help and they need it now. One example of this occurred in Mark 5. Jesus had just healed the demoniac on the east side of the Sea of Galilee. When he sailed back to Galilee on the west side, he is mobbed by people who desperately need his help. And then he's interrupted by a man named Jairus. Mark 5, 22, when one of the synagogue officials named Jairus came up and upon seeing him fell at his feet and entreated him earnestly saying, my little daughter is at the point of death. Please come and lay your hands on her so that she may get well and live. And he went off with him, and a great multitude was following him and pressing in on him. So Jesus prioritized this little girl's need over the need of the multitude. And he goes with Jairus to heal his daughter when he's interrupted again. Verse 25 tells us, And a woman who had a hemorrhage for 12 years and had endured much at the hands of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was not helped at all, but rather had grown worse. This same woman, after hearing about Jesus, came up in the crowd behind him and touched his cloak. For she thought, if I just touch his garments, I shall get well. This woman doesn't talk to Jesus. She just sneaks up behind him in this crowd and touches the hem of his robe. She believes that he has power to heal her, and she is healed immediately. After she explains to him why she touched him, he blesses her for her faith and sends her on her way, healed and whole. But this incident took time. Now Jairus' friends come up to him and tell him that his daughter has died. So he doesn't need to bother the teacher any longer because obviously there's no hope for death. Verse 36 says that Jesus, overhearing what was being spoken, said to the synagogue official, do not be afraid any longer, only believe. You can imagine the crisis of faith that was going on in Jairus' mind at this point in time when he got the tragic news that his little girl had just died. So after being interrupted for the second time, Jesus goes with Jairus to his house and raises his daughter from the dead. Many, many, many times you will see Jesus ministering to needy people who had interrupted him. Actually, needy people never interrupted Jesus. Needy people were the reason Jesus came to earth in the first place. He said he came to seek and to save the lost. What we see as interruptions, Jesus sees as divine appointments. When our plans get interrupted, We should view that interruption as God putting his appointments into our calendar. See, God modifies our schedules every day. You get phone calls you weren't expecting. Appointments get canceled or moved. Someone calls you out of the blue. Those are all God's appointments intervening in your life because he has eternal plans for us that go beyond our earthly calendar. At the time, I'm sure Jairus must have thought, If only Jesus had not been interrupted by the woman, he could have saved my daughter from dying. He didn't see at the time that Jesus' plan was to raise her from the dead, a far greater miracle. When God interrupts our schedules, he has purpose beyond what we can understand at the time. You know, this coronavirus pandemic may have interrupted your plans. I'm sure it has, but it never interrupts God's plans for you. God has divine appointments already on your calendar. You just don't know about them yet. So when you plan your day or your week, leave some white space for God's surprises. Remember, God designed us to do life together. 